So today I'm talking with Barbara Loomis, a restorative exercise specialist and certified practitioner and educator of Maya and Chinese abdominal therapy. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. hi Barbara. Thank you for being here with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Great. So I wanted to start by saying that I really loved the quote on your website where you say that you combine ancient healing techniques with the science of biomechanics. I think that's amazing because it's something along the lines of what I do in terms of applying uh, holistic methods with the science uh, that's proven to work for people. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about what it is that you do and uh, maybe a little bit more about that quote. Sure. So as a restorative exercise specialist, I focus on the biomechanics of natural human movement. If a woman came in to see me for a retroverted uterus, where the uterus is tipped back against the rectum, mm -hmm. and then she walked out of the office with her high heels on and gone in her car and sat with a post tilt, so with a um, pelvis tilted backwards. Yeah. And then she sat all day on her sacrum in her tailbone. The retroverted or the uterus would tip back again towards the rectum. And so it undo all the hard work that we did. Oh, right. So in the, the Maya tradition or what I learned from Dr. Rosie Darvigo, who's a naturopathic physician, she specializes in muscles and ligaments. And so she combined the Maya work that she learned from Adana Leahy Ponti, one of the last Maya shamans of Belize, as well as some Maya midwives. And there's certain techniques that they did that they didn't know exactly why they were doing them. But and she would ask, you know, for instance, uh, Miss Hortense was a midwife in Belize who delivered babies since she was 13 years old. She didn't have past a grade school education, but she would press on this point and uh, Rosita would say, well, why do you press there? And she'd say, because it's good. Well, why is it good? Because it works. Well, why does it work? Because it's good. <laughs> and Rosita just, <laughs> it drove Rosita nuts, but she looked at an anatomy book. She's like, oh, that makes sense. She's um, pressing on the pudendal nerve. And so even mm -hmm. within the Arbigo techniques of my abdominal therapy, it's a combination of those ancient healing traditions with science. Makes so much sense. That's so interesting. I um I was I've mentioned this to my the ladies who follow me that I did a session, a my abdominal session last year, and I found it to be quite life changing. So maybe you can tell me a little bit more about um, how you do my abdominal massage and and maybe what it what it does for for women's health or for women's uh, pelvic health. Sure. So the Maya massage is an external, non-invasive technique that um, we massage from the top of the pubic bone right here to the bottom of the rib cage. We also massage around the sacrum and the tailbone and also the lumbar area all the way into L3 oh, because wow. the suspensory ligament of the ovary attaches at L3 and contains blood and nerve supply. And so if you're congested in the low back, that can interfere with hemodynamics in the pelvis. Oh, wow. But during a session, we would uh, teach the client how to do her own self-care massage. And the self-care massage is great for men and women. Um, in particular, it's great for women to reposition the uterus that may have shifted. Okay. Due and to... Um, wearing high heels or pelvic alignment, modern life. Um, for sit maybe, sitting for uh, long periods of time? As, yeah. Sorry, for sitting long, long periods of time too, is that something that can affect it? Definitely, especially if your pelvis is in neutral. Okay. And so when you say pelvis in neutral, what, is that, what does that look like? Sure. So here's the pelvis. Perfect. <laughs> your, your ASIS. Mm -hmm. And so if you put your hands on your... Um, what people call their hips, mm -hmm. and that bony protrudence that sticks out in front. Right. I'm just feeling that's that. That's your ASIS. Okay. Stands for anterior superior iliac spine. And then your pubic bone. This should be in vertical alignment. 
And yeah. oftentimes what happens is when we're standing or sitting because we don't have the strength and we're not really designed to sit in chairs at a 90 degree angle all the time, this starts to happen. Right. When it's you called, slouch. Yeah. Yeah. Your pelvis rolls under. Right. And yeah, you start to sit on your, your sacrum. Oh, Okay. So that then causes all kinds of issues related to our uteruses. Yeah. So the uterus, and you can see a little uterus in here. A little baby uterus. <laughs> yeah. She's, uh, and then here's the, the ovaries back here and fallopian tubes. And the uterus isn't just floating in there. It's attached to bony landmarks. It's, um, there's uteral sacral ligaments attached Sometimes to the sacrum, sometimes to the piriformis. There's also round ligaments in the front, cardinal ligaments that attach to the lateral side wall of the pelvis. And so it makes sense that if your pelvis is in position, that's going to change the intra-abdominal pressure. It may press the uterus against the rectum or in front against the bladder. Oh, See, it's so ama- that is so amazing to me because I think so many people just think that the uterus and the ovaries are sort of just floating and um, aren't attached to anything. So the fact that you're saying that it, they're attached by ligaments to all these different bones uh, in your pelvic area makes so much sense to me. And so it makes sense that when we have bad posture that it will ultimately affect our reproductive organs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Maya massage works to restore blood, lymph, and nerve, and energy flow in the pelvis so that your body can maintain homeostasis. And so your body knows what to do. We just have to get out of the way and remove the obstacles and let it um, naturally do what it it knows what to do. Makes so much sense. I think we get in the way of our healing all the time. A lot of us do. Yeah. Yep. So that makes so much sense. Thanks for sharing that. I think that is really fascinating. And for so many people, it would be really eye opening because, again, I think people just aren't aware of the fact that our, uh, our posture can affect our reproductive organs and how they function. So what, uh, what kind of issues uh, can, would a woman or might a woman experience if her uterus is out of place or her pelvic bones are out of place? Sure. So, um, this is Margo. <laughs> Hi, Margo. She's really she's, cute. <laughs> she's a happy uterus. Um, so this is the fundus, the very top, mm-hmm. and here's her fallopian tubes. And ideally, she's positioned slightly over the bladder. So the bladder would be right here, right, and the rectum back here. And so she can even be flexed forward. Okay. And when if you can imagine the uterus being flexed forward like that, she's going to have to cramp and twist to get the blood out of the top of the fundus mm. every month she yes. bleeds. And if she's far enough forward, she can be pressing on the bladder. And so women may notice frequent urination, but not a lot of pee comes out, a lot of urgency to pee, especially right before and during your period when the uterus is heavier. Okay. Your uterus normally weighs about four ounces when you're not menstruating, but can double in size to eight to 10 ounces right before and during your period. So that's a lot of extra weight yeah. on the surrounding organs or blood supply. And so if she's tipped backwards, she could be pressing right against the rectum, my hand being the rectum. And in that case, you can get pencil thin stools, even foul smelling menses from toxins from the colon seeping into the uterus. Okay. More cramping, a backache during your period or right before right. when the uterus is heavier. Um, fertility issues, uh, chronic miscarriages. Wow. Yeah, and the uterus can also tip to the left or to the right, which could, you know, kink a fallopian tube, uh, cause heaviness or lack of blood flow down one leg. Like I've seen women who were pregnant and their uterus was shifted over to one side and one foot would be cold and kind of purple, another one white. So you can see how when you move the uterus back to center, you get improved blood flow down the legs. Wow. So it really is the center of a woman's universe, literally. 
Yeah. Yes. That is so fascinating. I, um, I, you know, I didn't, it's so funny. I don't think anybody really realizes the profound connection that our uterus position might have on all these different parts of our bodies. And especially like what you were just saying with when you're pregnant, it probably exacerbates all of these issues to begin with. So, um, so once a woman has done a, a my abdominal massage or seen you for something along those lines, what typical results can they expect to see? Well, in the first three months of doing your Maya abdominal massage self-care, mm. you may experience a different kind of blood flow each month. You may Sometimes you might experience more cramping or more blood. Yeah. Um, it's been my experience that the periods get better right away, but everyone's different. So in those first three months, your uterus is going through a cleansing. Okay. And so we combine that, the Maya massage with... Uh, the bajos or the vaginal steams to help aid in the cleansing of the womb. Okay. And usually by three months, women are noticing a brighter red oxygenated blood. Mm-hmm. But before that, they may notice like a brown um, dry blood that looks kind of like coffee grounds or even a tar. Women have explained it looking like tar. Mm. And some women pass what looks like flesh from their womb. Okay. It happens when women haven't bled for years and they're in menopause, they'll have another cleansing of the womb. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, and so when, uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit about the vaginal steam, because I think that that's something that a lot of women don't know anything about either. Sure. It's a tradition in uh, Central America and also Korea. There's a Korean spa here in Portland that has a vaginal steam room where you can sit and have tea and steam your vagina with other women. Oh my <laughs> um, God, so I love it. That's so awesome. Korean spas offer it, but it's, it's kind of expensive in the spa, mm-hmm. but nice to be pampered. But you can do it for pennies at home. Yes. There's special vaginal steam chairs. They're around $100. They look nice. They're wooden. Um, I have a U-shaped shower chair that mm. I'm on Amazon for 40 bucks. You can also do it on the toilet. You just have to clean out the toilet really, really well under the rim and everything. (laughs) And then you take a handful of herbs, Mm. dried herbs, or a quart of fresh herbs. You put it in a soft boiling water. Yeah. And the lid on and you let it steep for about 10 minutes. And then when it's cool enough, I test it with your your, uh, wrist. You still want a steam coming out, but you'll want so hot that you're going to burn yourself. The mucous membranes of the vagina are very sensitive. That would really suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to do that, and it should feel good. Okay. And you take this uh, steaming bowl of herbs and you place them under your vaginal steam chair, or if you're using the toilet, wrap it in a towel mm-hmm. to protect the porcelain. And, well, first you have, with the toilet, you have to flush it, turn off the water valves, keep the water out. And then you put your bowl of herbs wrapped in a towel okay. in the toilet. And then you sit on it, uh, undress from the waist down, except for keeping your feet warm. So okay. keep socks on. And then you take a towel or a um, blanket and you wrap it around your waist to keep the steam in. Yes. And you rest there for maybe 20 minutes. And you should feel your your whole pelvis just fill up with this really comforting warmth. And sometimes you'll feel it all the way into your heart, rise up all the way into your heart. And so it's a good time to do a heart uterine meditation or read a book or, yeah, just relax. It sounds like a really pampering experience. I actually... Uh, I wanted you to share it because you're the expert, but I did it. I did it at home, and uh, it was quite an interesting experience. I did the whole toilet thing, um, and uh, and it was it was really amazing. I it was almost like a meditative experience. So I really really liked it, and I think that uh, when you can sort of wrap your head around the idea of it, especially if it's something that's new to you, uh, I I definitely think it's something that everyone should try just to see what it it feels like. Yeah, yeah, and if you do it on the toilet, you might have to um, get up to pee in the, the shower, because once you stand on the toilet, automatically you have to pee. Yes, but, of I don't course. know if that happened to you. Yeah, it totally happened to me, actually, now that I think about it. Yep, I had to get up. <laughs> 
So that's I I really love that um, the concept of the vaginal steam. I think that it it must be a really great complement to the my abdominal massage. Uh, there was something I wanted to ask you as well. Um, so many women come to me with men complaints of complaints of menstrual cramps and uh, digestive issues and things like that. Are uh, any of the techniques that you do are they geared towards that? I know my abdominal massage is, and it helped me tremendously with menstrual cramps. So, is there anything else, or or why does it do that? Yeah. So. With the Maya massage, it helps with menstrual cramps because the uterus, uh, if the uterus is out of alignment, mm -hmm. then you're getting lack of blood flow and lymph flow. And so when that happens, acidity builds up and pain results. And also the uterus may have to, like I said, cramp and twist and turn to get all the blood out every month. Right. And so once the hemodynamics are restored in the pelvis, there's less cramping, but also helps to balance hormones. So it helps with communication between the ovaries and the anterior pituitary glands because a lot of hormones are carried through the blood and nervous system. And yep. so you're re working to restore that. And then with the Chinese abdominal massage, I may incorporate some liver work with um, painful periods because the liver processes all the hormones. And so if that's backed up, then blood can cool in the pelvis for one and cause hemorrhoids and also those hormones that aren't being processed recirculate through the blood and send outdated messages and so yes. it makes sense to bring the liver give the liver some love absolutely I know that's it's it's so aligned with what it is that I do because I talk very specifically about hormones and how they function and the fact that if you're not getting adequate blood flow to your pelvic area, there's going to be an issue on a chemical level. And then, of course, the liver as well. There's, I mean, our livers are so important to hormonal health, and, and people don't usually make that connection. So I love that you view it from a more uh, physical standpoint, um, whereas I, I'm usually talking about it more in a cleansing slash, uh, I don't know, food-based way. So I appreciate that, that uh sort of point of view as well, because I think that it's really important to see it on, on, on all different levels. Um, and then, of course, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about, fertility, and, and you mentioned it a little bit in the beginning, but fertility issues are a really big concern for many, many women in the U.S. and, and now worldwide. Uh, what techniques do you use to address fertility issues that women might be experiencing? Well, the Maya massage, mm -hmm. we ask women to give themselves three months of trying not to conceive, okay. which I know sometimes by the fine, by the time they find a APMAT or Arbigo Techniques of Maya Abdominal Therapy Practitioner, um, they've tried everything else and they're like, oh my God, I'm not taking three months off from trying. But we encourage you to try to do that because of the cleansing and rebuilding process that's going on may take three months. And everything you do or don't do during those three months is really has an effect on the health of your eggs. We also encourage the husband or the partner to come in and get my massage and do his self-care because it also helps with the um, health of the sperm. Wow. And so, yeah, we're combining the my massage and um, we ask that you do your vaginal steam once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, in that week prior to your period. You can do it up to three times that week prior to your period. We also have a one-month protocol if women just really don't want to take three months off. Okay, so my abdominal massage is not recommended for anyone who might be pregnant or who uh, has an IUD or an active infection? Right. Uh, you can do the Maya massage after 20 weeks, and so you can see an APMAP practitioner, and she'll show you how to do the Maya pregnancy massage from 20 oh. weeks on, and you can do that even through labor. Oh, I, uh, I also wanted to mention that I really loved the, on your site you had an event called Align Thy Uteri, and uh, I thought that was very cool. I love the use of words. And I think that um, there are, you probably have a lot of events happening at some point or another, so maybe you can tell us what you do, what your services are, and uh, how women can contact you. Sure. I, my website's nurturance.net, 
That's N-U-R-T-U-R-A-N-C-E dot net. And I also have a blog. It's called alignmentmonkey.nurturance.net. You can get to it from my website. But on the blog, I have the instructions on how to do a vaginal steam. I also have the fertility protocol and a lot of alignment stuff on there. So lots of good free information there to check out. And I teach a three-day or two-and-a-half-day workshop called the Arvigo Techniques of My Abdominal Therapy. And that's level one training, so it's just for self-care. But it is a prerequisite for anyone that wants to go on and become a professional. You can find where I'm teaching on the website. Perfect. Thank you so much. This was incredibly informative. I cannot wait to share this video with uh, the women in my tribe. I think that they are all going to really appreciate it. I think there's something in here for everybody, whether they're trying to get pregnant or not, and um, or if they're struggling with some kind of other issue like cramps or digestive issues. So thank you again, Barbara. I really appreciate you, sit, you sharing all of this information with me today. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. You too. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.